Happy Thursday, happy Thursday, everyone. Welcome to Change the Live, hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burden. Got a super show planned for you guys tonight, and also, happy, thank, uh, how about I say Thanksgiving, happy Black History Month. <laughs> <laughs> super Duke February and everything. So, again, um, well, I want to let everybody know, with uh, it being February being Black History Month, we have a lot of shows that aren't necessarily themed around uh, black history, but more so th- themed around black community issues. So we got an awesome show planned tonight where we'll be discussing what are the top threats to black men. And with everything started, what's up, T? That's my, my big junior. He waved me in and everything. Um, I'm super excited about this because it's one of those topics that are uh, hidden in and dead at home because I, I do a lot of community work and do a lot of work with kids. And, uh, I hear a lot of different ideas and what, what's wrong with the kids and what's wrong with the youth, what are some of our biggest threats or what are some of the biggest excuses. So I want to go in depth with uh, tonight's show. And if we can do anything, have any kind of traction or traffic like we did last week right. uh, and everything, I'll give you a story about last week also Okay. and everything. But uh, I'll be super excited about that. Um, also, before tonight's show, I'm going to go over all the shows we got coming up for this uh for this month that we'll be covering uh, during Black History Month. Also, we won't have a show next week. I will be in the Bahamas, you know, you know, drinking our little Tahitian treat <laughs> and everything. Watching the grass skirts walk by. Mm. Yeah, I just got to get my, get my right shades. <laughs> the dark one. I'm going to walk out the booty watching shades. <laughs> <laughs> You know, they, they just black. You, 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 like, like a damn baby rattle. <laughs> yeah. But we're going to have a good time. Me and the family, we're going to go down there celebrate pre- PJ graduating. Uh, this is his graduation gift, so I'm super excited about that. This is actually my first time on a cruise. Really? Yeah, really, man. Been around the world. It's my first time on a cruise. And everything. My friend took me on one. Well, Pat, well, everybody tell you the same. I get all kind of take this medicine, take that medicine. And, the patch, that's for the uh, motion sickness. Okay, cool. I, I wasn't sick. Okay. Friend been on several. She took me on one, you know, for a gift for a grip and we went on my first one. It was all right. Oh yeah. I didn't get sick or anything. I'm a. Um, I was all on the balcony and everything. I'm gonna go get it. Probably maybe take it a day or so before then. Best to have and not need and need not have. We'll see how that goes and stuff like that. But uh, I'm super excited about that. Now, before we get started, I want to say what's up to my awesome producer, DJ Lau. That's right. That's right. That? Also, we got Slick316 on uh, the one or two. She's working the Facebook page and everything. I have to tell you something funny. What was the brother named Leron? Mm-hmm. I talked to him. I called him. Oh, you I called him. I went in halfway out the driveway when I called him. And uh, when I called and talked to him, uh, uh, we, we sat around about 30, 40 minutes. Really? Yeah, I let him say everything he had to say uh-huh. and tell him why I didn't agree with it. Okay. And, you know, he was cool, man. He was cool, man. Like yeah. I told him, I thought, yeah, I was gonna, I mean, he probably shocked you calling too, wasn't he? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. He was glad I called. Oh, okay. But we talked. We talked and everything. But, you know, and I told him, I said, just keep tuning into the show mm-hmm. and everything. But that's why I told him, I said, um, yeah, well, you know, I didn't mean, I said, now, nah, I want you to say what you want to say. I said, but I'm going to tell you something about me. You better sit here back. Don't just say anything far-fetched. Cause he was saying everything, I will explain it mm-hmm. and everything. We had a good conversation good, and everything, good, good. but I, I was glad, you know. So, uh, but I told him just, you know, do me one favor, uh, tune back in, mm-hmm. and you know, bring a couple more people with you. That's right. You know, and everything. So, <laughs> that's all I talk about. Yeah, and, and also subscribe to the YouTube channel. <laughs> but um, you know, knowing we we hash uh, the previous week, like I said, again, we're in Black History Month. We started with that. Super excited about that. We won't have a show next week. Um, like I said, during the month of February, we got. Some great shows playing, kind of just give you an idea. Like tonight, we'll be talking about the biggest threats to uh, the uh, to black men. I think that's going to be a great show. Next week, we're taking a, a hiatus. be a little bye week next week. Uh, we'll be back on the uh, the 20th, where we'll talk about could power numbers really work. You know, uh, I don't know if you're a big, uh, know of uh, Dr. Claude Anderson. I'm a big Dr. Claude Anderson fan. Well, he's a, he's a black economist and a strategist. And he has a, he talks a lot about that whole group economics mm-hmm. theory. And that's kind of like you want to get Brother Laurent was talking about that whole group economics okay. theory. And I was listening our, to our it. Power, our money being our power. Yeah, cycling through and everything, yeah. different levels. And I said, I think it's a good idea. Mm-hmm. I just ain't seen the shit in practice. So, again, it's damn near like, you know what I'm saying? You, you're thinking about, you know, and see how you're looking at, you see how you're looking at the heavens? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't think of it because if it was that practical or that common, you better shoot it out. I, and please don't remind me of Sweet Auburn or 
or Raleigh Durham or, 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 or Black Wall Street mm -hmm. where we had to. I'm like, in theory, right now, you don't have to, mm -hmm. you know, and everything like that. So that's one of the things. So we're going to discuss that, you know, is it, is it even a, uh, would it really work? And then at the end of the month, we'll be uh, kind of spinning off of that. You know, I think we're going to kind of, uh, I don't want to say all our shows this month will be kind of controversial, but I do want good conversation, not crazy conversation. Right. And that's a big great word. Exactly. And that, uh, that show on the 27th will be asking, do, uh, do you believe integration has made a negative impact on the black community? I hear so many people talk about we were doing so well during segregation because we had to li uh, uh, live off each other and do certain things. And uh, people just, uh, you know, a lot of times I hear people talk about uh, integration as being such a negative thing. But I'm going to be honest with you, man. I, I kind of look at it a little differently. I think, you know, you probably had during integration, yeah, we had our own, but you had, it was a few of us had our own. Mm -hmm. I mean, folks still going down to Mr. Child and Bar and Bread mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. So do, do you have, did you have a lot of blacks doing a lot of things, uh, um, uh, from an empowering and business ownership standpoint, right. yeah, but I still think the vast majority still was just not doing well. Mm -hmm. And again, it just kind of opened the boards. And even like what now, just through technological advance and innovation, you got a lot more opportunities right now. It's just a matter if you're going to take advantage of it. And we're going to talk about some of that stuff tonight. So again, it's going to be an action packed, exciting <laughs> <laughs> Black History Month and everything. So make sure you guys are tuning in. Um, as always, you guys know I am the owner of Majestic Business Services. We are a um, business service firm. Uh, we offer bookkeeping, tax prep, payroll, um, consulting for individual and small businesses. We are at the beginning of tax season. If everybody has tuned into the show, seen the videos or the commercials I got streaming out there, came to see us, I appreciate it. All our returning customers that have came back so far and are still planning to come, I appreciate it. And most importantly, even though I'm going to be out of town next week, the staff is still working. The phone is still on. <laughs> Make sure I'm on out. vacation, not majestic. Right. So we already got that. Team is already knowing what's going on. They already got the script. So you're still going to get the same super dope quality service, you know, without me being around. And most of the time, they got everything controlled anyway. Uh, so th th that'll be that and everything. But just uh, reiterate, we got those $50 cash referrals going. Um the the six thousand up six thousand dollar cash advances are still going, uh, bank cards are available. But one thing I do want to just even though I just said it kind of quickly, those cash referrals. I mean, just think about it. You send somebody to me, mm -hmm. you just send somebody to me, and I give you fifty dollars. That's it. I give you fifty dollars. Now where in the world are you gonna beat that? They don't have. They don't. They don't cash. Have to I'm going to send 10 people to you next week. Cash. Come on, now. <laughs> I need about 500. I'm going to send Heck 10 yeah. people to you next week. You hear that? <laughs> Last one had $500 in his pocket. <laughs> Come on, now. It's a, it, it's a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. It's a no-brainer. And, and, and just take advantage of it. You don't have to come to me. Mm -hmm. Just send them to me. Mm -hmm. Just send them to me. And don't send them with fake W-2s. Yeah. Six uh, yeah, <laughs> somebody claimed a thirty-year-old baby. <laughs> I've had it all. Really? I've had it. All. I've had it. All. <laughs> I've had it. <laughs> please, please don't do that. But you know, uh, again, but we'll be taking. So listen, we got a lot of great products and stuff out there. A lot of great services. A lot of great promotions that we're offering to our clients. So please take advantage of it. And again, we appreciate all the support you guys have been giving us. Want to give a big shout out to my son. Uh, P.J. Burton, we had senior night for him at the high school, at John Burr High School, they passed Saturday. Mm. So we all walked out. You know, he got a big old banner and everything. So I'm, I'm really excited for P-Dog. Uh, we got to go to the recruiting. I'll tell you, we're going to the recruiting office tomorrow. He has a full ROTC scholarship. It's uh -oh. an accelerated uh, officer program mm. that he's taking advantage of and everything. So I'm, I'm, I'm super excited for P. And um, uh, it's totally different, man, because, again, P was a – me and my oldest son were talking about it. Like, man, he initiated it. He now, again, you know, yeah, hey, Dad, what you think about this? I'm like, yeah, whatever. But once I started looking, it was a great program. Now, did he know the gist of it and everything like that? No, but he initiated that and everything. Mm -hmm. It was kind of cool because I had got to one point raising a little hell because he was, to me, dragging his feet. Okay. The sense of urgency wasn't there <laughs> in terms of, hey, he you know. He took a little sense of urgency, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm tired of my damn daddy cussing at me <laughs> <laughs> for a moment. Sometimes. So, 
Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it bothers me when they're playing. Now, yes, my damn kids. I probably sound like Charlie Brown, teacher. I'll be raising hell so much. They probably just see. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> they don't even hear nothing. It's, is that talking? You guys hear something? <laughs> it's, turn the volume up on the MP3 players. Yeah. All right, Dad. <laughs> That's it. And when I throw that shoe, that shoe go to the back of their head. Y'all heard me. <laughs> but now, nah, man, uh, I'm really excited for Pete, man. You know, uh, that's my namesake, so man, I'm super proud of him. And uh, my oldest son T, he did a great job graduating from college, and PJ's next, and I think both of them say real good examples for the younger two, man. Right. Uh, I appreciate all of them, and really excited for Pete too. But uh, again, this is Changing Lives, hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burton. Make sure you go to the YouTube channel. We're streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Oh, hi, Johnny. Johnny's good. Oh, oh, I just got a phone with Johnny too. Johnny's doing awesome. I just got a phone with Johnny. Johnny doing good. Johnny okay. doing good. Hey, Johnny. Talk for a hot second. <laughs> yeah, she good. I talked to her for a hot second and everything. But uh, she doing great. I appreciate that, lad. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I missed that and everything. Talk so much about this damn uh, uh, black history. <laughs> My people got us enthused. I know. And right. everything. But again, like tonight's show, we're asking that question. What the biggest threats to black men? In all seriousness, again, this is Change Lives, hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burden. Make sure you go. We're streaming live on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, listen, make sure you go uh, check us out. Uh, all the different platforms we got different information. Uh, the YouTube channel is getting a little stagnant, so I need some more subscribers. Come mm -hmm. on through that. Uh, thank God for uh, Slick Three Sixteen. That uh, uh, the YouTube, the Facebook page has been growing immensely. I get a lot of new uh, likes and people tuning in and stuff like that. She the, she the Facebook master. Oh, man. Spirited debate last week. <laughs> Spirited debate. I got called everything but a tone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might got called a tone. It just didn't, get, just didn't get tight. You need that to have, have yeah. more people come mm. next this mm. week to see what else we're going to talk about. Hey, like I told the brother, man. Hey, brother, keep, tune, keep coming. Yeah. Bring some more folks in there. Thing. You know, but it, it, it was cool. But, again, I appreciate that, too. Um, we you know with, with, with today's show in terms of what the biggest threat to black men, uh, number one being a black man, being a black father, and uh, I think being a a black mentor to other uh, young men. Uh, this was something I wanted to uh, visit mm -hmm. because you hear so many stories, and I was thinking about <coughs> what kind of hit home with me. On one of them challenges, y'all looking at one of them documentaries, mm -hmm. you know, they had a kid in prison. The guy was just sitting there talking. They're you know, like, "What are the reasons you've been here?" and he just sitting there, young cat. And you be thinking, like, these kids be having so much potential. Young, handsome kid and everything like that. You know, he hadn't really uh, uh, tattooed his whole face like some of them and everything. I'm <laughs> 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 hell on. I don't get no job. <laughs> nah, man. But, you know, really and true, I'm just, you know, just looking at him. a young, handsome kid. And you just think when you see the, sometimes, like, damn, the damn potential. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because I always say to myself, it takes far more intelligence to do things in a criminal manner mm -hmm. than it does just do it in a straight manner. So if you actually can do things in a criminal manner where you have to do it illegally and conceal it, that takes a lot of brain power. power. power, power so power. imagine if you're using that channel into a positive direction, what you could be doing. Because it's one thing a lot of times people say, well, that guy, he's a drug kingpin, but he could have been a business CEO and stuff like that. That shit sound good, but if he could have did it, he would have did it. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, he wasn't confident enough stuff, stuff to do it, or whatever, what, whatever happened, happened. But at the end of the day, it's just a promise that you can do that. But a lot of them guys have a lot of potential. Right. And when listening to this young brother talk, what stuck with me was he was just sitting there rocking in his chair because I was asking, you know, what are some of the, the factors? He started thinking about, yeah, I didn't have a father figure, no mentors, you know, the community. He was just bringing up all this shit, just talking, talking, talking. I never heard one damn time say, I. What I did. Yeah. Not right. one time. Right. Not one time. I mean, he had a real, I have a dream speech. He just reciting it. Right. And just, and it, not one time did he say I. And I think we've gotten to a position, a point now where people are so stuck on to why they can't do certain things because it's stated. Mm -hmm. Why, you know, and everything. And, and people just aren't really going up to that full potential or promise. Because of they've made barriers that really ain't there, mm -hmm. or there are barriers that they that they don't even attempt to yeah. overcome. Yeah, and um, that's why I want to talk tonight because 
I think we can have a lot of dialogue back and forth. And y'all let me know if anybody uh, chimes in and got any questions. But uh, I think a lot of those barriers are self-created. Some are some there, some been there, some are always going to be down there. Mm -hmm. But like we talked about last week, once you decide to uh, get in the race, you in the race. You got to run. You in the race. Yeah. You don't need to go back and say, well, you didn't know, uh, you know, this wasn't whatever. Because one thing about it, Lab, me and you racing. Mm -hmm. Lab beat me. And I said, well, Lab, man, you know my back will hurt. You don't want to hear that <laughs> shit. Man, don't tell me that. No, right? yeah. no that's the last thing you want to hear. Don't diminish my win. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So when things don't go for you, you don't need to be sitting there saying, well, you know, his daddy worked for them. Or this and that happened. Well, cool. You knew that before you started. Mm -hmm. There's going to be an issue. Don't get into it. And so that's why I want to really get into, you know, Again, I'm not fin I'm not finna you know say that certain things aren't around, but I do think that the, the you know I want to I want to uh, take a look at some of the things that are there you know, from different people. I got can I put a uh, uh, a person poll up to kind of discuss everything, but uh, also give my personal views on what I think mm -hmm. are some mm -hmm. of the main mm -hmm. reasons and everything like that. So again, you know, just let me know if anybody chime in, anybody got any questions and stuff. So with that said. Uh, one of the first things that you know we'll talk first we'll visit some of the ones that uh I would say people submit uh, before we get started again this is Change Your Lives hosted by yours truly Deontay Burton make sure you go to the YouTube channel Facebook Instagram subscribe to it we're here at uh, Misfits uh, Media Group Misfits Me I ain't booking it up honey. you did it right Misfits, Misfits Media, Media Group, Group Misfits Radio hey listen and that's the great part about being part of Misfits Radio the awesome part about it only you got all these great different sh shows coming on eight days a week listen if you're driving you say look you know pooch i like looking at that handsome face you up i really can't do it while i'm driving don't worry <laughs> you can go and check out the podcast everything's still there with you know itunes spotify iheart radio google play tune in soundcloud and if you get too much of poochie which i think is hard to do <laughs> You can check out all the other shows coming out different days of the week. Okay, so we got everything for you, you know, and everything. So I think if you uh, uh, get hit with everything with my show and then look at my other compadres on the different shows on this radio station, you'll love it. But all I ask you guys to do is subscribe to the YouTube channel, subscribe to the Facebook. Make sure you uh, go on the Misfits Radio and uh, look at all the different shows. Subscribe to them all. So trust me, you'll thank me later, okay? Now. We're going into everything. We start looking at the list. I put a, a poll up, kind of just got a feel from different people. We start looking at some of the biggest threats to black men. Mm -hmm. Again, let's say this first thing first. Give this disclaimer. These are all opinions. Exactly. And everybody has one. Exactly. So I just want that to be known. And we can just have a great debate about mm -hmm. what's what and everything. But I want, you know, just have a spirited and a healthy conversation exactly. uh, about everything, you know. And, you know, most importantly, when we look at some of these things, let's also, while we're bringing them up, look at possible solutions, real solutions, not, you know, we're going to fly back to Africa and all this other kind of stuff. I like where I live at. <laughs> I work hard for my house. Right. I like my man cave. I like, you know, I like sitting around the oak trees. I like every now and then talking to that damn squirrel that come in my backyard and shit. <laughs> I'm not going back to Africa. I might go visit, but no, no, no. no. No, it's not. It's not. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No, not pooch. But again, one of the first things we're going to say is, uh, you know, lack of positive ro uh, black role models. I think, um, you know, when we start with that, shout out to Crown Royal. <laughs> this is how you wait for a boy. Right. <laughs> this is That's how you wait children, period. Woo -woo. <laughs> no chase. Ch children, period. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Children, period. Let me mm. add something to that of positive role models. Sometimes you have to go out and find them. Sometimes you have to look for them in places where you normally would not look. And I'm going to give you a good example. When that first part when you were saying no father figure, I, I never knew my father. I couldn't mm -hmm. tell you his name, how he looked, anything. Mm -hmm. But I <coughs> took on finding a role model and you know, I had five uncles. So they had to be dads. Now mm -hmm. to get, don't, not, not, this is the thing. My, some of my uncles, I'm only, they're only five years older than me. Yeah. You know, my mom was the oldest mm -hmm. out of all the kids, out of the nine kids. Gotcha. So I had uncles that were close to me, but I still looked up to them. Yeah. 
So they had to be role models in certain parts. I had to use them, <coughs> and they all different. You know, mm -hmm. they all different people. You know, they they their own different people. But I use them as my role. I never had. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. I've never had an issue where I was like, man, I wish my dad was around. I never had that issue because I had other people that took the place of that as a role model for me. My best friend Ike, his his dad came around. He knew his dad, but his dad never treated me like I was an outsider. So. I was cool with that. You get what yeah. I'm saying? So I, I I was lucky enough to have people. Now, I'm not saying that's going to work for everybody, but you have to find those role models where you can. Mm -hmm. Because they're around, you just mm -hmm. don't see them. Yeah. Or you're just not looking for them. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm telling you from a, a place of experience, you know, as an older person coming up in Chicago mm -hmm. that didn't know his father as a role model, couldn't tell you what his name is to this day. I don't even know that nigga name. That's mm -hmm. the kicker. But anyway, I found role models other places. Man, let me, you know what, just to that point, you know, my dad is over my house uh, Sunday uh, watching the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And me and my dad are tight, but he wasn't really around, you mm -hmm. know, when I was growing up. And uh, he always took the shit out of me. He always saying, man, man, I'm sorry, man. You know, I'm glad you're doing good. You know, I just wish I was around more. Like, nah, she was cool, bro. <laughs> 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 No, no, it no. Was for the best. Oh, we wouldn't be here <laughs> if you was around. It was for the best. No, no, no. no, no. You know, to, <laughs> shit. I'm very clear. He'll look at me, fuck you. Yeah, but I'm like, no. Nah. <laughs> Trust me. No, no. God oh, knew what he was doing. Oh, that dope was God okay. Knew what he was doing. I, I, I ain't need to be around it. No, uh uh. Uh uh. So, no, 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 no. But, you know, to your point, Lab, and I'm just saying this to you. I'm going to ask this question to you, and it's kind of will be sticking me with a lot of young men here I'm talking. Say if you didn't have those surrogates. Say if you didn't have your your uncles, your 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 your, your buddy's father. Mm -hmm. Do you think that you would have had a negative came out negatively if you didn't have let's say any? I don't think so because my main goal was not to turn out like that. You get what uh -huh. I'm saying? My main goal was, you know, I mean when 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 I was in Chicago even though I had those surrogates, they still had their own lives. So mm -hmm. I still had to stay with my mom, and that was kind of a rough time for me. You know, mm -hmm. it was sometimes that I didn't eat. I didn't. So I, I started going to summer school. I, start, I started applying myself in other ways in order to figure out how I'm going to do things. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I didn't want to be a product of my environment. Uh -huh. I didn't want to be the kid selling drugs on the corner because I didn't have no money. I wanted to figure out other ways to get money. Gotcha. So when something, you know, in Chicago, summer school is free. So during the summer, I'm like, Shh, I'm going to eat. So yeah. I'm going to go get breakfast and lunch for free, Yeah, 8 to 12. And then that second year I did it, I noticed that I was getting credit because I was actually going to class too. Yeah. And it was summer school. I didn't care. Do it before you know I mean, most of the kids in Chicago didn't come out to after 12 anyway uh -huh. to play and stuff. So I was cool. So I was done before I knew it. Mm -hmm. But I applied myself in other ways because I did not want to be I'm gonna just. I didn't want to be like my mom. You get what I'm saying? Gotcha, gotcha. I used her as a motivation for me not to be like her. Gotcha, gotcha. You you, you know, uh, again, we're talking about tonight's show. We're discussing what are the biggest threats to black men. The reason why I asked you that question was kind of like I spin off. What, you know, just my dad being at mm -hmm. the crib. When I talked to kids, and I, I had to be straight up with them. You got a fifty-fifty chance of mm -hmm. having a good parent. <laughs> so you may get a mama that's a good mama. Or a plum food. Mm -hmm. You may get a daddy, the Cliff Huxtable, or you may get damn. <laughs> <laughs> Can't I get damn. <laughs> shit, I, we got a whole list of damn daddies. Yeah. <laughs> but I say this to say you really don't know. And I, uh, when we sit here and raise hell about what we didn't have, we don't know if we would have had it or not. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, I think we inherently know, unless you're an evil person, I think we inherently know the difference between right and wrong. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, just because you would have had a daddy around, that don't make, that don't mean you know you would have sat there listening, folks. If you, it's a lot of hard head ass kids with daddies mm -hmm. and everything, <laughs> and, and it's a lot of crazy, wild, punk ass daddies around. Mm -hmm. So you can't sit here and say that you know that. And I'm just, you can say it rather you want to, but you don't know mm -hmm. that that you what you'd have. And if you're smart enough to understand. That hey, I'm doing something wrong. I don't think you necessarily need a father to do that. It's good to have this, that, and that to kind of do that and everything. But every dad, you don't know. And some dads 
You know, you may not be able to talk to you. So I may just show you a good work ethic. You don't know. So it's, like I said, it's 50 50. So you cannot, I think it, it, you just cannot bank on something you just don't damn know. That's just too big a gamble yeah. to know if I had that, I probably would have had. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I'm going to go, like, as far as the right and wrong thing, you know, back when we were in school, the teachers could punish us. Yeah, but you knew that that's how that that was one way you learned right from wrong. Yeah, if I do this again, when we had grandmama again, you know what I'm saying? You, I, I mean, I it would it, it and I know those things are different for us now because we're older. Th- necessarily, the family unit's not like that, like mm-hmm. it was when we were growing up. But there was ways and and things that you learned what right from wrong. And it, as you got older, you knew right from wrong anyway. Yep, you knew if I did this, this was gonna happen. Yep. So a lot of times we will say that we didn't have this or that, but it still didn't change the fact that we knew what we were doing was wrong. And, and, and it doesn't negate the fact that, you know, really you just didn't take advantage of what you had. Right. If you had your grandmama, you had your mama, you had your sisters, and they telling you what to damn do, you didn't need a man to sit here and just tell you right or wrong. Mm-hmm. You got enough people doing that. You just don't know what's going to get. That's how life is. Life is, you, you, life is the ultimate, you know, card game. You don't know what the hell, you know, what hand you gonna, you gonna, get, you gonna dealt. get dealt? You just gotta know how to play it, and I just think a lot of times things people try to make excuses for certain shortcomings. Again, we're we're using different uh, opinions. What we're talking about the biggest stress of black men, but we're taking uh, a array of different uh, opinions that people have given out and everything, but also kind of make solutions and be you know bring awareness to discuss each one. But that's one of the biggest things when I hear people say that kind of stuff. Again, we're talking about the biggest stress of black men. The next thing that um, uh, what I think, and um, I got a, a, a notice about this, but I, I kind of agree with it, is, is health. Mm. And that being both mental and physical health. Right now, I do think that we're in a day and age, especially, you know, being a father. I've seen so many, I think teachers are smarter mm-hmm. because they have more information, they get more training and stuff like that. But I think they're less tolerable. Mm-hmm. to a lot of stuff and I think that uh, we're in education age now where kids are encouraged to get diagnosed and treated for certain things instead of being you know dealing with patients mm-hmm. and yeah, uh, they throw you throw you a pill sit you in the corner oh shit I seen it too much man and and, uh, and you're right that that is it but mental health is a big issue for our our, our community we don't talk about mental health like we should. We don't go get seek mental health. Like not just the kids getting thrown in the corner and taking the pill. I'm talking about real legitimate mental health because us as men, we need assistance with mental health. We got stresses that we deal with every day. Just being once we walk out the door, being black men in America, we have to deal with stresses. So mental health in the black community is a big issue that does not get addressed at all sometimes because some people see it as lame or as weak or whatever, but uh, everybody needs somebody that they can talk to to help guide them through, not even to guide them through, but just to help them get, you know, get some of them stresses off of them, to talk it out and figure out what's next. And we don't talk about that. And that's not even what the kids, if we did it better, then maybe the kids would do it better. I, I, I'm not sure, but as far as school is concerned, school nowadays is not built for that. Their teachers are not built for that. They're, totally agree. They're, they're not built for it. It's not yeah. like when we were younger. And I keep going back to that because I have to go back to my experience as a child growing up. It seems like the teachers were just tougher. Their skin was just tougher. They just, you know what I mean? It, it, you think about your teachers when you was in school, your principal. You know, miss, I can tell you right now, Mr. Parker, when I was, and this is elementary school, I remember this teacher. Mm-hmm. Mr. Parker didn't play, but we respected him as the principal. Well, you got a good point, Lab, but I'm going to say twofold with that, too. I do think, you know, kind of what you said, too, teachers are taught to be teachers. Mm-hmm. So are they going to be observant to certain mental health issues and stuff like that because they ain't trained for it? No. But on the flip side of it is, too, I just think that we had some damn folks, you know, going back. They had mental health issues. They just wouldn't tolerate it. They said, sit your crazy ass right. down. <laughs> <laughs> they had they were crazy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they sit your crazy ass down. And crazy ass because it got crazier. But, you know, even just say with, 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 when I'm, I'm looking at even just say the onset with schools with, you know, just want to be diagnosed kids, give them, you know, the ADHD. But then we look at, you know, like you said, kids get older. It's not, you know, taken care of or addressed. Because we do know if you got a leaky pipe, 
If you don't fix it, the leak gonna do what? Get, get worse. Yeah. So we gonna sit here and like try to, we, we looking at those certain things about it when you see a person now a teenager. Now they got schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. Now they got bipolar going on and everything. And the family say, oh, he's just crazy. They don't wanna take, get, try to get no kind of diagnosis or anything like that. Or even just say you was a young man with no kind of issue. Parent leave, family stress, you know, grown man, like you said. Right. Damn, I got stuff going on at home, my job, this, that, and that, and you ain't got a partner to get it out on. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of times that, like you say, especially with brothers, like mental health is a taboo. Mm -hmm. Nobody want to talk about it. And a lot of times when I see people do go postal, murder, suicide, that's when the first thing comes, where, where the hell are your friends at? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times people really do that, excuse me, not all, when they really probably didn't get a chance to decompress. Mm -hmm. Either with a friend, confined, or professional. Not all, sometimes some people just tick tock, yeah. I better shoot the whole damn uh, mm -hmm. ship up. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of times people kind of reach out to do it and because uh, people look at, like I said, in a negative sense, you're weak, you're lame, because you need to talk to somebody or you need to get some kind of treatment, people just don't do it. I've personally seen a lot of, especially being in the military, you know, just like me and you talking, next thing you know, your head get blown off. And, you know, they tell me, okay, it'd be all right, but I got to go back out there on the field mm -hmm. and an hour or two later. And I have not even Process that processed yet. that. So I go back out there and do it. And then these guys come back home, they all, they were asking, I think now it's mandatory. Mm -hmm. But I know when I was in, they'll say, anybody need to talk to somebody, we got people on deck. Nobody want to seem crazy, mm -hmm. so nobody got it. Mm -hmm. But now you see all these guys walking around down five points and Army BDUs talking mm -hmm. and rapping to themselves mm -hmm. and shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, but, but but that's what happened. A lot of times, people just wouldn't uh, 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 address certain things and stuff like that. Let me you was turning in. That was one of the things with, with, with doing that, but um, I do think that's one of the biggest taboos. Again, we're talking about um, the biggest threats to black men. And again, we just went over just being mental health. The other thing being physical health. I think that uh, we have a lot of ailments as black men that's just naturally prone to us, mm. you know, obesity, you know, because again, most of us have a, you know, our frames are built where we can maybe hold weight mm. differently, uh, type two diabetes, you know, certain cancers and stuff like mm -hmm. that are just more prone, prostate cancer, mm -hmm. you know, those are kind of things that, you know, again, uh, some things can be combated with lifestyle and diet, some stuff just, Shoot back at you. Hey man, shoot crap. You just you yeah, dodging them arrows mm -hmm. where they coming at you, and I and that's another thing. I just don't think that um people the people are I, I will say this people are a lot more health conscious now than ever before, especially oh, yeah, in the black real community. Health, they real health conscious yeah. now. They're, they're a lot they're a lot more health conscious as far as diet is concerned. I don't know if physical now. I'm gonna tell you when I go to the gym, mm -hmm. it releases a lot of stress for me. Yeah, just a, it, it from head to toe. It makes me feel better. Yeah, I don't know why it is. I couldn't tell you the scientific reason of why that would be, mm -hmm. but it does. And I think a lot of times, especially with diet, diet is a little bit hard to get off, get to change sometimes mm -hmm. because the expenses of eating healthy are a lot more than eating bad. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And somebody can come on and disagree with me or tell me how it's how it's not, but what I find because we are trying to eat healthy we are in this house we're trying to eat healthier mm -hmm. but the expenses of eating healthy are, are a lot I mean it's a lot more than just and I, 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 I'm gonna say it's it, it's designed that way that eating bad is is cheaper than eating healthier I mean you go get fresh fruits and they don't last that long or fresh fruits and vegetables they uh -huh. don't last very long so you're buying more food in a week than you would normally buy if you just bought the frozen stuff now they're they're true they are frozen vegetables and stuff but we're we're talking about healthy as possible yeah trash is always gonna be cheaper exactly now you're hitting <laughs> on the head you're hitting on the head then like a lot of times uh we live out of uh sometimes you're living out of convenience mm -hmm. um you busy you ain't got time to go home and cook some stuff or pull stuff out of the freezer you might just stop and get you a little two for two. Mm -hmm. You know that two for two gonna sit on you two <laughs> weeks. For <laughs> four weeks. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just a matter of convenience. Not right. that you're trying to be not disciplined. It's just you get home late. You just ain't got time for all that stuff thaw out and everything. Yeah. And it happens and stuff like that. But that's what another thing, like I said, again, we're, we're looking at those as far as health. 
that mental and that physical stuff, again, those are two main heavy hitters. Mm -hmm. Again, it's Change the Lives, hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burton. Make sure you go to the YouTube channel, the Facebook channel, Facebook page, or uh, uh, go to the Instagram on the Deontay underscore 77, where we're uh, discussing tonight what are the biggest threats to black men. Um, make sure, guys, you got a question, want to chime in, make sure you're reaching, in, reaching out through the, uh, the YouTube or the uh, Facebook if you got any questions or anything you want to add to it. Um, the next thing being a uh, police, mm. you know, this is something that I think really been uh, uh, estimated over the past maybe five six years. Mm. Uh, a lot of things, you know, just I I do think the whole uh, industry or professional policing has changed with the onset of cameras, mm -hmm. and I think that it's not an issue of Things are going crazy now. I think things are being captured, captured now. Yeah, and that's what's changed a lot. That cell it's phone brought, with the camera changed a lot of things. Exactly, but it's changed a lot in terms of uh, policing policies and um, some procedures. Mm -hmm. Some it ain't did a damn thing to. Right. You know, and everything like that. I do think a lot of um, things that are done uh, more so. People are handled a different way. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll be just like, and this comes from a person that has some close friends of police officers. I do think a black officer handles a black man, a black person, and a white person totally damn different. Mm -hmm. They do. I mean, you can sit here and say what you want to say and all that kind of stuff. And I, I and I may be wrong with what I think the thought process. The thought process I always felt was you felt that white person might know somebody, mm -hmm. be somebody, know somebody. Yeah, look at me just being a nigga. Right. I You're could exactly right, and, and that's what I've always felt. Like, you know, no matter if it was just somebody, you might have just got a uh, white homeless person. Mm -hmm. It's just not him the same. Mm -hmm. They're not him the same. And I always felt like it was just that. Okay, this person, you know, you just you're not looking at or thinking just like or even that that's somebody's son or that's somebody's father, or whatever. Mm -hmm. it's okay, that's just a nigga right there. Yeah, but a white person gets treated. You know, even we, we you know we talking about regardless of the gender, regardless of the age, mm -hmm. you know, they're treated as a citizen, right? And everything. The spinoff from that is too. Uh, I've also seen you know a lot of brothers handle situations totally wrong, mm. totally wrong. It may got a lot of folks messed up. Mm. Again, we're talking about the biggest threats to black men. It's changed a lot. Hosted by your truly Deontay Burton. Uh, you uh. You got brothers in here, well, I, I know my rights. Right. I ain't got to do that. No, and damn well, the much law education you got is, uh, what's the man name was in the, uh, Perry Mason? <laughs> I was say it in the day. Wheelchair. Yeah. Y'all know Perry Mason? Yeah, yeah. I can't watch the hell out of Perry Mason. <laughs> Matt Lock. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> CSI. You're right, right. Don't know shit about the law. <laughs> and you tell this damn man with a pistol in front of you, you can't do this, you can't do that, and all that kind of stuff. But you really don't damn know. Mm -hmm. You really don't damn know. Like, you have no legal expertise or nothing. You know what I'm saying? Right, I get it. And, 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 and I, and I, and I kind of look at it from this perspective is that I always say at the end of the day, and this is the advice I gave my sons and any young man I, that I come into contact with, we can go down there and put a claim in, and do I, I mean, uh, not a claim, a complaint. Uh, a complaint in, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you think so, a complaint in the next day, we can do all this kind of stuff. How far it gonna go, I can't really promise you. Right. But if you get into a conversation and you get your ass arrested, car towed, now we gotta get your car to tow, mm -hmm. we gotta get you out of jail, call your job. Mm -hmm. Your job might fire you because we can't get post bond. Right. Then we got to go get your car out the, uh, out the yard, out the impound, and they done took something out, or we can't get it because we can't find the paperwork. We done went through all kind of three or four damn days and stuff because you didn't want to get this damn man your damn ID. Right. Because you knew it wasn't your right. Well, you could have gave it to him. We could went the next day and get a complaint. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to win that argument on the side of the road. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's why I tell kids sometimes, like, look, man, you got to think. Sometimes you got to evaluate yeah. if it even worth the time. Yeah, exactly. I'm not even no big proponent of the yes, sir, no, sir, and right. I I mean, just, you know, hey, look, just take care of business. Mm -hmm. Get to them. And you got to be over this because you don't know if you're dealing with a damn fool or not. That's true. You don't know. You don't know. 
And that's one of the biggest things. Like I said, you don't know if he just got a phone with his wife getting on the nerve. They child getting on the nerve. You don't know what people got in. And some of them just crazy. Exactly. They, some of them just want to kill somebody or, exactly. just, or arrest somebody. They, they woke up that day and say, oh, I'm going. I'm charged up. You, might, it, you know what I'm saying? That might be their first day. They want to prove a point. Exactly. Lose the battle, win the war. Mm-hmm. Or they may be straight, level-headed. Mm-hmm. But but you came with some BS. Look, man, I just asked you for your damn ID. I'm just working like you are. Mm-hmm. You trying to go to work. I'm at work. Look, I see your ID. See your insurance and stuff like that or whatever. Hey, look. When I went to... Uh, uh, the casino for my birthday. Police pulled me over, and everything. I'm like, shit. I know, you know, I'm cool. Right, I got my stuff, good. man. Everything good. On me. He like your tag light out. I'm like, man, I don't know my damn tag light out. And what he got me was, he said, you know, you tagged in this spot. Mm. Remember, my birthday was a couple days prior. I don't forgot about getting you my damn about tag. Your damn tag. Yeah, I'm thinking about <laughs> casino. Yeah, I'm thinking about yeah, the Think about I'm it. I'm all on that blackjack table right, already. Right, right. I said, damn, man, I forgot. He said, man, look, just take care of when you get back. Mm-hmm. I could have met that man with so much aggression from the get go. He could have been an ass and just. Because you know, you're like, why the fuck you pull me over for my tag? Like, how many times do they look at their tag? Yeah. Like? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, damn, man, come on. It's right. a real crime. Why the hell are you looking at my damn tag? Like, hey, right. Yeah. Right. And, 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 and again, hey, man, you know, damn. He said, man, just get take care of the money. All right, man, appreciate it. Let's go. Uh-huh. I could have had that shit a whole different way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And everything. So I say this to say that. Um, sometimes people just doing their job. Yeah, I mean, I, and, I got pulled over once. I was doing eighty down twenty. Mm-hmm. I was doing. I knew I was doing every bit of eighty. Cop yeah. pulled me over. He said, "Hey, you know you was doing eighty, right?" I said, "Man, I was in my little car." I said, "You know this car don't do eighty." I said, "Look at this car. You know this car can't get eighty miles now." I said, yeah. "This car will break down if it get eighty miles." And he was laughing so hard because he was like, "Man, I ain't never heard of." It. I said, "I'm telling you." Officer, this car will not get eighty. And mm. you, it had to be the car next to me. Look at this little car. And he stepped back and looked at it. He said, "Man, slow your ass down." And told me to get. <laughs> and, and, and that's one of the things look, we just got to think. Yeah. And uh, that's one of when we start talking these threats and stuff like that. Uh, again, if you run across a fool, you can't help it. Mm. That is possible. But I think sometimes we may need to look at avoiding conflict. You know, just sometimes you're like, look. Officer was rude, said some shit. Just let that go. Because you're not finna win that argument. Right. Now, I don't time, give bro. a damn if you got that phone or not. I don't care if you're streaming live. I don't care. We seen the video. Right. But we rolled the window up. And most of the time, it's that damn dumbass man with his wife or girlfriend in the passenger seat giving him all the instructions. He know. Let me get a man the ID. Don't you get him yet? Don't you give him nothing? That's another threat to black men. Mm. The fussing <laughs> girlfriend or wife. But I ain't got that on none of my list. <laughs> <laughs> don't you give him no damn ID? We don't have to do that. I ain't got that wrote down. <laughs> they see you know the dude who got his ass whooped, shot, and yeah, everything. Right. They done drag her out. I can't believe you shot him. <laughs> if you would have shut the hell up, Let him give him we probably ID. home by now. Right. You know what I'm saying? Told me. Because the man, look, he going to reach for his damn ID. Don't you give him shit. I don't you get off the shit. You don't see the video, folks. Right, right. They see no cop them bust the glass, tase him. She said, no, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Hey, man. <laughs> Your time. Moral of the story is leave her ass at home next time. <laughs> 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 we talking about threats to black men. Yeah, I don't know how the hell I left that off the damn list. <laughs> the the bl- damn wife and girlfriend. Shit. <laughs> 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 how many deaths they responsible for? <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, how many deaths they was about for? <laughs> Listen, your dumb ass. Yeah. Deaths, and we ain't got the ass whooping they've been responsible for. <laughs> oh, now nah, that's a lot of <laughs> side niggas, regular niggas. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were your husband on divorce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we kind of we kind of divorced, but we not. We don't live together no more. <laughs> it's <laughs> but amazing. Over there every day. It's amazing. We ain't had that on the list, man. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely should have been on there. Right. <laughs> okay, this is Change Live, hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burden. Tonight's show, we're talking about some of the biggest, what are all the, uh, the biggest threats against black men. Uh, the next thing we're going over is just drugs. I do think that uh, right now, uh, drug culture is very big in our community. I mm-hmm. think that. Um, you know, again, I ain't trying to be as petty as somebody, somebody smoking a little weed here and there. 
But you got a lot of these kids that are taking damn near every damn thing at CVS, mm -hmm. uh, from the pills to the damn cough syrup, and just don't even understand just waking up one morning sober. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and, and just to see, and, and how can I put it? You know, I thought it was cool when we were in high school, you mm -hmm. get you a nice looking girl, get you a little neck sack or something like that, y'all get y'all some Cisco or Boom Farm. You were cool. <laughs> You was cool. Yeah, we know we showed our age on that. 16 years old. You know. Oh, oh, the man. The farm is, is, a, is a little classy. Yeah, yeah, you, got, yeah. Right? you got your Nick. You got your little boom farm Cisco. You were good. Right, right. Oh, right. oh, she was ready. She was just ready. Girl, he bought this, that, and that. I just had to. You know what I'm saying? We call that a poop special. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I go, I hit one of them little fat pair of home right, nicks. Right. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and, and it was on. <laughs> it was on. It was on. Yeah, yo. Get home to it. But, yep, man, went over there, got me a little nick and everything. Right, you right. know, we were good. We good. But now, man, these kids got to, they have to smoke some stuff with them to see, I guess, Jesus. You know, they can't just get the little mellow weed high. I always say, how high you want it? How high yeah. you got to be? Yeah, man. How high do you want to be? I mean, it's like. I, and I'm I'm putting my personal business out here. It's like when my mom, you know, she was an alcoholic, and she would drink and drink and drink and drink. And it's like, how drunk do you want to be? Yeah. I mean, at some point, you know that you way over your limit. But you so drunk to the point that you throwing up and can't remember from one day to the next. And this is not no one-day issue. You got to drink so much for three or four days in a row. Mm -hmm. So how high do you want to be? Like, real deal. I, I know they say that being high takes away all the stresses. You don't think about nothing. And I get it. Mm -hmm. Stressful stressful life. I get it. But at some point, you got to come down from that high and you got to deal with the stress is still going to be there. The stress, stress is not going to away, go away the higher you get. Absolutely. And it, and, it, and it seems that, like I said, it's more acceptable now. It's all in the music. It's all in the lifestyle. You see some of these, especially, you know, know how influential entertainers are right now and stuff. You see these kids just being some of these damn interviews. Just, mm -hmm. what the hell? You know? Yeah. And you be sitting up. Uh, we have some yeah. interviews here <laughs> that go like that. Shit. You're like, that was a horrible Man. interview. <laughs> That's all I got to say. <laughs> like, yeah. what the hell? You just shit. That's that real mumble rap. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. But I mean, just hearing, you know, again, just, uh, when, and, and again, I um, I can understand. I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. to, I understand sometimes people want to mask pain and forget certain things. But clearly, you, you distort all your thinking. You distort all your decision making mm -hmm. and everything. And again, I think as far as we're talking about threats to black men, you put yourself in a situation where you'll never be the best you possible. If you're in a uh, uh, a tainted state, mm -hmm. like I said, man, ain't nobody love you know having a shot of liquor more than me. Right, have me a good stick and everything mm -hmm. like that. But again, I I don't like that feel. I mean, just being in the army, I mean, I've got blasted. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been in Europe and I've had boy, I'm talking about some you know some of the, some of the, the probably the best weed that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what you want to call being in Nirvana? I've been in Nirvana before. <laughs> Many times. Yeah, I don't want to be in that shit. There, I don't know the hell right. I was. I don't want to see no damn rainbow. Let's say shit in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. I don't even see no four laps. <laughs> hell no. It's nowhere in the hell. Right. And again, you know, like I said, that shit cool to try to live like that. And I think that's what's hurting a lot of brothers because. Again, you're not keeping yourself in a situation where you can make great decisions, mm -hmm. think out and everything like that, and uh, long-term effects. You don't know. Yeah, you long don't damn effects. know. effects. That, that people don't realize the amount of drugs that they take will have a long-term effect on them later on. Or especially when you're 20 or 24 years old, you're not thinking about when you get 40 and 45 years old, them yeah. drugs and what they're going to do for you. Huh? Yeah, I mean, uh, of course, you nobody like six said nobody can tell you nothing at that age, but you have to think about those things because hopefully you thinking that you're gonna live to that age. Well, even the flip side of you, twenty four years old, they'll be an expert know how much the THC level, mm -hmm. and they know how they tell you all the good fun facts about this gummy <laughs> weed and all that kind of <laughs> shit. They can Google and find out how damn <laughs> effed up you gonna be about it. Right. All right, right man. Talk to a damn weed expert. They'll tell you some shit. You be like, damn, you think you had damn sick flat? Like, it's a cooler ride. Right. You know, they start describing all the damn ingredients and what it does. <laughs> man, 
Now, ain't gonna say 10 years from now, you ain't gonna have no baby. Hey, right. matter of fact, you ain't gonna better get riled up. You, gonna be, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All of the kind of stuff gonna be, you know, but they'll never go into that and everything. But like I said, again, we're talking about the biggest threats to black men. Those that uh, drugs, and like I said, I think we have a very big drug culture. Very big. I mean, we really need to get uh, away from, and I think that's uh, hurt us a lot um, with uh, uh, um, being able to grow. Yeah. Or do anything. And I think that's a. Yeah. Food drugs. Prescription drugs. That's what I'm saying. They doing every damn thing at CVS. Just sitting there. And I wonder, and that goes back to the right and wrong thing. Even though it's in our culture, it's in the music and everything, we still know right and wrong. We still know that if we do this, we, if we do it, what what's gonna what's gonna happen or what how it's gonna make us feel and where it's gonna take us to. So we still know right and wrong. Even with it being in the music and the music and the culture and all that, we still know it may be wrong. Or we still know right and and wrong. So we can't say the music made us do it. What's the one of the first lessons we all knew? When you was a little baby, you walk in the kitchen. Mama say, don't touch that hot ass stove. Is, <laughs> and he's like, okay, touch it. Hey, ha, 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 You touch that hot ass stove. Yeah. You did not like that feeling. Yeah. So your mama knew then, okay, he learned a lesson. Now she knew she got a dumb ass child. When every time you come in there, ha, 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 right, right, Damn, right. boy, did I tell you that shit for the hundredth time? Because the rest of the kids learn. She gonna have that one damn food every damn day. Ha 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 ha! And he's so damn dumb, he might put his head on. <laughs> <laughs> they know they got a winner then. God damn, boy, just like his dumb ass daddy. You know, he just sitting there put his damn head on the stove. <laughs> oh man, again, we talking about the biggest stress to black men. We went through a, a couple of lists of things that uh, um, the people have uh, usually talk about a lot. That being uh, well, male role models or male examples, uh, health, them being mental or physical, uh, police, and we also uh, talked about drugs. Getting this change live, host by yours truly, Deontay Burden. Now we finna get into my things that I kinda think, you know, probably some of the biggest uh, threats to black men. Okay. And uh, I think one of the first thing is uh, 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 lack of motivation. I think lack of motivation is really hurting black men. I think that, uh, a lot of times people are so stagnant, they don't necessarily want to try to uh, do certain things. People want to be a, you just, you know, into the culture, everybody want to be a boss. Mm -hmm. Now, that boss, if you are a real boss, and I was at, uh, shout out uh, uh, Harper Archer uh, uh, Elementary School, I was at that career day yesterday. Okay. And that's when the kids asked me, are you a boss? <laughs> Don't I look like it? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shit. Man. Yeah. This, this is the closest you're going to get to one, you know. <laughs> Add me on my damn Touch bro. the hem of yeah. my garment. <laughs> you can't be an A student. Yeah, you can't be no A student. Add me there. But, but to that point, people will say certain things about what they want to do, but nobody really wants to do what it takes, takes to, to be there. there. And I just think that a lot of times people's complacency or that stagnant and their growth have a lot to do with they just don't have that motivation mm -hmm. to to do more, you know, and everything. And uh, and, and the, the the drawback with a lot of that is you'll never be what you can be until you start pushing yourself. And until you see that, hey, I I want to be this entrepreneur and I'm going to do this, that, and that. When you say, okay, well, I'm going to get me a pressure washing service. And you go buy it and you do a couple of houses here and there. But you still can't see yourself as... ABC or Am uh, what's the shit Am uh, Amke what's the, what's the little thing spell Tom and Jerry uh, yeah, Acme 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 yeah yeah Acme pressure wash where you just got this chain and stuff that's just being motivated and knowing okay I can do this and stuff and people just don't want to take the other stuff because it's gonna take you working twenty hours a day right I would tell my kids like look man hey dog you see me working all day this is what it takes this is what it takes yeah you know and everything i mean if it was that easy everybody do it right I, i'm gonna i'm gonna disagree with you just a little bit mm. i don't think the lack of motivation is there mm. i think that a lot of people start things and then they hit the wall or they they start they get a lot of business at first and then the business slacks off and then they can't figure out how to get the business back or what they need to do because they feel like they're doing everything mm -hmm. so a lot of times it may not be motivation it may be the wall you, you you hit that wall and you're like damn okay i did this i started that i'm doing this what else do i need to do and once you sit back and think about the things that you may need to do 
you may not can't figure out anything at that particular moment. Gotcha. So sometimes it may not be the may not be I'm gonna be the acme of. It's like how do I get to be an acme of because I didn't did all these other things and they're not panning out. And sometimes gotcha. those stresses and those things can take a person's uh, quite a, what, what they call it. They take a person's spirit and he's they don't they not want to do anything else. They're like, man, I did all this stuff. I can't sit here and wait on this stuff to build or do whatever I need to do more things than what I'm doing already because they got family, they got kids, they got other things that may need to, you know, push them forward. I other agree. things that that's hold may no, I'm not gonna say hold them back, but they need to, they got mm-hmm. other people they need to think about. So sometimes it may be just a wall. I, I agree with you, but I would add this at this point. Shit, I still don't think it's lack of motivation because if you're motivated, no matter what stumble block or pitfall, some gonna push you over mm-hmm. to do it, you know, and everything. Now again, are you gonna hit those blocks like damn I don't know what to do and everything like that? Something can push you to 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 do it, but I I, I, I agree with you. Yeah, I mean, it may not. Now, don't get me wrong. You will go forward over the over the obstacle that's in your way. But some people, some people hit that wall, and it's like that's the end of it. Absolutely, because, it ain't meant for everybody. Right, right. And so they they motivate to start it, but when they keep hitting that wall, it's like okay, I'm done with this. Mm-hmm. So, so it may be I don't know how to put it. Whereas in I'm not saying it's not the lack of motivation, but it's just the motivation killer. People say I'm wrong. I always say some folks are meant, meant to work, with, meant uh, to fry fries. Okay. <laughs> some people some are folks, not meant to be a boss. Some, some people are, are meant to be the employee. Hey, some folks okay. at capacity pushing that mower. Okay. And you might say, give me that damn long mower. You miss these four yards, but no. Right. Some folks just ain't, and we talk, we ain't talking about with no mental issues. Right. Just some folks meant to be chief fry guy. Okay. But you try to do shit and happy with it. Don't you get on that grill. <laughs> you stay right there at the front station. <laughs> I, hey, I don't work to plenty of them. Uh, but now that's a good point. The second thing, though, man, I think one of the biggest stresses is uh, lack of vision. Mm. I think a lot of times uh, we talk a good game, but I think a lot of brothers just can't. They ain't confident enough to uh, uh, see what they really can be. They mm-hmm. want to be the king of king, you know, uh, king of the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. They cool with everybody, you know, seeing okay, they do this, that, and that, but they don't really want to go around the real king. Because mm-hmm. when you get around, you ever see a cat sit here and talk about the money that they got or what they do, and just brag, brag, brag. Mm-hmm. But then when some cats come in with real money, real businesses, they kind of get quiet mm-hmm. because they don't want to be uncomfortable and get asked a question right. that they can't answer. So if you're really making paper, you're doing certain things like that. Excuse me, other guys come in or other guys that actually maybe these are all, you know, uh, 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 executives mm-hmm. or just say to have some kind of managerial experience. We ain't even just got to go way elevated. Right, right. But they may ask you a question that make you uncomfortable, can't answer. A lot of folks just kind of quiver up. Right. Like I said, they like being around everybody else. Y'all should do this. Y'all should do that. Right. You know, I've seen that with a lot of, you see a lot of older family members. I want to talk to younger guys and y'all ain't did this. And you and you be like, damn, Uncle, you ain't did shit either. I've seen a lot. <laughs> I know some person. I ain't gonna say now. Just right. You tell my kids, like, man, don't listen to that damn dude. That dude be talking shit. Where he, he at? A, yeah, he ain't did a damn thing. Right you know. You know. I'm gonna give you an example. One, me and my friend, we went to the Hamptons. Uh huh. All uh-huh. these people got money. I mean, like, this ain't no little money. I mean, it's like money. Well, money. you said Hamptons. I mean, this ain't no little bit. I mean, these talk. These guys talking about uh-huh. severance packages of forty million dollars. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. So we all sitting around at the pool having conversation. Mm-hmm. Now get it, you know, I'm managing shopping center, so I can have a conversation with these folks because I've dealt with people of this cabinet. You got one guy <laughs> that's walking around and hurt, hurt my heart because he was even my brother. He wasn't my brother, but he was a brother. Mm-hmm. He can't have a conversation with these folks without asking them, well, let me see your cocky. What kind of cocky you get? But but when we not around, he talking about how he cook and he a chef and he do all this. But when they all came around, the conversation changed. He turned to uh, Stephen from Django. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, but, you know, exactly. What, what, what kind of car you drive? Let me see your car key. You that, that Mercedes car key. You know these people drive Ferraris and stuff. But the thing that was that made my heart hurt was the wife of the guy he was asking about the car key. Chumped him off and said, "Honey, he wants to know what kind of car you drive." You know, like. I stop putting your ass over here and sit down. <laughs> my neighbor got one. Yeah, my neighbor got one. What? 
But when they wasn't around, it was a totally different conversation. Steve and Django. It was a totally different conversation. You thought he, you thought he was a proud brother, right? A, you know, I'm a chef. I do this. I do that. I cook this. I, you know, and I'm like, okay, this dude a chef. You know, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm not a chef, so I, you know, I can't talk chef lingo. But as soon as they came around, I thought you would be like, shit, I'm gonna drum up a private chef business. No, these niggas, these motherfuckers got money. Yeah. It was nothing like that. Man, like that. Again, this, this is a change live host by your truly Deontay Burton. We're talking about the biggest threats to black men. And right now, we're going over the point where I'm bringing up being a lack of vision. Um, I think it's just the same example. Mm-hmm. You have that militant brother, you know, and everybody in the break room. As soon as that white supervisor come in, hey, man, we'll finish your saying. <laughs> hey, man, come on, man. What, what we need? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What the hell? <laughs> you thought you was in there with Malcolm X. I know, right? <laughs> he riving him up. White man walking off, he's just. Yeah, he's looking down at the ground. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Hey, Jim, how are the kids? Oh, they're good. They're good. They're good. <laughs> you remember I got a little pressure washer thing. I couldn't wash your car this week. <laughs> you like, mother. <laughs> that vision. And, you know, just even when we're talking about vision, I think a lot of times. We got a lot of people that really can't see past, you know, two major things, athletics or music. That's true. You know, just, just knowing, okay, I can be an attorney, I can be a doctor, I can be a lawyer. Or you know, we ain't got to go so deep in profession, man, just actually just trying to attempt to, to do more. And uh, I think we can look at the, uh, especially we talking about black men, you can look at the enrollment of the technical schools and colleges where we have this big lack thereof. I mean, just that whole issue of just trying to do certain realistic advancements, mm-hmm. we're not even trying to do it. Yeah. I'm just saying that that's a, a glaring thing about it. Like, just we're not going to school, college or tech school. Our female counterpart sisters are going. They're going, right. And they're getting out of jobs. So now you want to sit here and enter into a situation where you're talking a good game and they're making a good game mm-hmm. and tell her what to do. Shit don't work, man. <laughs> Shit don't work. That's some backward ass math. You're right. <laughs> That's what backwards Well, you true. trying to tell me because I ain't got this, that, and that, I can't have it? Basically. <laughs> well, man. Come on, man. Oh, because I ain't got no car. You think that, you know, we can't date? Basically. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Shit. <laughs> Shit. You know. Come on, man. You know, <laughs> you gotta want to do and, better, right? And, and yeah, and and, and 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 realistically, what this does, it kind of forces a lot of men to settle for what you can get, mm-hmm. and not create what you dream about doing or really doing it. Because you know that vision, vision carries you a long way. Mm-hmm. Where you can sit here and say, "I can see myself," but when you just see yourself just a, in a limited arena, I was looking at just man, think about some of your homeboys, some old Chicago pimps did a documentary. I was seeing the other night, and it was one guy. He was talking about, he was an older cat. He said, I really didn't know anything outside our little neighborhood. Right. He said, so my whole world revolved around being the king of this neighborhood block. Right. And I never thought about, this is a, like a 70-year-old damn man. Mm-hmm. And he was just saying, like, you know, as I got older here, I went to prison, come out of workplace, then I started seeing stuff. He said, but, like, his, his heyday, he said, that was just my whole focus. Being that, just not having that vision. Mm-hmm. You know, some people look at, a brother can look at and say, damn, man, dude, a congressman, like you can do it too. Mm-hmm. But they just don't have that vision of seeing, okay, all the confidence that I can do that. Right. And I, I think that, that was one of the things I think one of the major uh, threats to black men, having that lack of vision. Uh, again, this changed the live hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burton. Again, this night show, we're talking about the biggest threats to black men. And uh, lastly, what I think is probably one of the biggest things that uh, I think hurts black men is just having a big lack of accountability. Um, you know, when I started to show up, I gave that story about the young man that he was addressing everything, what happened wrong with him in life, and uh, he was just bringing up, you know, what he didn't have and what he didn't, you know, uh, and how that was just, you know, hindering him in life. I think that um, people spend so much time addressing and acknowledging the wrongs that have happened to them and what they couldn't do, and they spend one time just saying, I. Mm. You ever yeah. talk to somebody sit here well you did you 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 oh, you yeah and yeah. you never heard the word shit 
Well, what the hell you, you do? You do. You're right. Well, no, it ain't about me. And I think really as a man, and you know, and this is one thing I teach. I don't care. It's from five to thirteen. The kids I coach, mm-hmm. I always tell my kids, you have to admit when you're wrong, mm-hmm. because until you admit you're wrong, we can't fix the shit. Right. Look, I ain't tripping you wrong, son. You got to say I did it wrong. Now, we don't need to have on my bad, because then I get that, that pissed me off my bad. What, you ain't stop fucking being your bad. I'll give you two bad. <laughs> I'm going to give you two bads, damn it. I'm going to pull your ass out of the game now. Right, right. But again, we have to admit when we're wrong, because once we do that, we can do what? Correct it. Until you admit that, we can't do it. Mm-hmm. And that lack of accountability, that I think that's killing brothers. Mm. That's killing brothers, because no one wants to admit what they did wrong. Until they get so effed up. They, you know, I'm saying now you're doing because your damn. Because you have to re- look in the mirror once you say what you did wrong. Yeah, yeah. and you're you doing a damn pimp documentary, <laughs> <laughs> and you you want to get out the block, smoking your new port, right, right, telling about that shit. No you know? retirement plan. Yeah, yeah. You're seventy years old. Man, y'all see it, man. Y'all see it, man. Oh, I've seen it. Oh, cool, <laughs> I know you have. <laughs> man, I got to see this picture, man. I sent my boy. I had a screenshot. It was uh from them pimps, and they were all like in their seventy. You know, you tell they were like. Hard in their heyday. Yeah, yeah. But they were still stuck <laughs> in the 1970s. <laughs> oh, that's the only thing they. Hold on to it for their life. Yeah. You, know, you got to see these pictures. <laughs> I mean, it looked like Easter, a uh, Easter fest. I mean, all your pastel colors. Right. And right. they got their long gray perms and all that shit. Oh, it looked like an Easter rehab fest. <laughs> They all clean. At the old folks' home. Oh, man, they were fucked up, man. <laughs> fucked up. Fucked up. Oh, uh, uh, Easter rehab fest. That was all I could just kind of look at it. Like, they all got the Easter suits, but they all just come out of, you know, doing a little 21-day program right, right. and everything. <laughs> it was, it was, this is terrible. It was some shit to see, man. <laughs> but they could step. They could step. Uh-huh. They just still kicking it, you know, but it was cool. But again, man, um, uh, been a great show tonight, man. Just talking about that because again, I, I think that a lot of times we go over so much stuff, what's hurting and what's hurting, but we never address it. Mm-hmm. So I hope with tonight's show, we we went over a lot of things uh, that are hurting men in the black community. You know, okay. But hopefully, get some insight. Uh, you guys have any comments or questions about? It, feel free to leave comments or inbox me or give me a call or leave your number. I'll call you. And everything. So again, this is pretty much what we're gonna be doing next month. Again, we have no show planned for next week. Mm-hmm. I'll be in the Bahamas. Uh, I probably post like a live feed. I did one last night, man. Really? Fact. Tired as hell. I did me uh, once just kind of do the same thing. We did a promo. Oh, okay. For the show, it's about like eleven o'clock, and I got in from the office and everything and stuff. So again, I want to do uh probably one again, maybe Monday or Tuesday. Okay. You know, before we leave, just kind of you know give everybody something. But uh, again, appreciate the support. It's changed a lot. I hope by yours truly, Deontay Burden. This is Black History Month. Make mm-hmm. sure you take it upon yourself to learn as much as possible. You know, learn as much as possible. You know, again, uh, you're really empowering yourself the more you know. Read, man. Yeah. Read. It's read a book, man. Read a book. Read a Download a book. Read it. If the, just, I don't know why we don't read no more. But well, we are reading this. And, 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 and again, Back what I talk about, other, you know, other day we ain't talking about nobody, but just being real, let the shit go past prison literature. You know, again, we, ain't, you know, it's just so much Donna Goins, a nice verse Slim. <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, the Art of War. Yeah, yeah. Them your, your main prison books. I'm trying to think of another one. You know, what I'm saying that you know everybody go to jail, they read it. Yeah, I may have read this, that, and that. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> shit, now. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. it's just so much of it. You know, what I'm saying. You know, and trust my love, some iceberg slim. But I read all that shit when I was damn 21, 22. Yeah, when I, I thought I was a pimp. Slim. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I want to know how to handle these. Yeah. <laughs> but you got to learn. You got to. You got to do things because only reason I say read because read can inspire you to do and give you a. Sometimes books can give you a vision of what you what you may can do. I'm reading Steve Jobs' book right now. And it gives me so much insight on the thinking when you are starting and getting the business going. You know, it just it just helps. You get what I'm saying? Well, we and that's not even the same business as we got going right here. It's just certain things, but I apply some of those things to what I'm doing. Well, you just you, yeah, yeah. 
I've read all Trump books. And I'll be honest with you, that Art of Deal probably the best damn book I ever, ever read. <laughs> I recommend it all the time. And I got a buddy, he ain't writing, he ain't writing and everything. But you like you hit on something that I think we probably end the show with, man. I think it was very, very important when you was talking about reading. And I think this is probably maybe the the biggest threat to black men. You know, we know when we work out and we do exercise and stuff like that, we work out to make sure our body is straight and everything like that. I do think the most important muscle in our body is our brain. brain. And you see a person that's 70, 80 years old that has been not challenging themselves over their lives and stuff like that. They really can't, you know, they really ain't got their faculties and everything. And then you see somebody 70, 80 years old that's probably been a lifetime learner. They might not move, their body don't show it, but, but their brains, and when they talk, you say they're still processing. Mm-hmm. I say this to say that if you commit to being a lifelong learner, if you commit to always trying to push information, learn, learn, learn. Like Lab said, read, challenge yourself, and, co- and constantly, that's one of the damn one muscles in your body. You really ain't got to sweat to use it. And you constantly keep improving your brain power and your strength. I think you'll help yourself long term more than anything. Mm-hmm. So I think that was a great point you just said, brother. You know, look, man, read, learn, commit to making that a, 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 a lifetime deal and i think that you'll because as a black man we are life is hard enough mm-hmm. we got enough excuse me we start like we always say we start you know behind the curve we got so much shit to deal with yeah we just went through all kind of stuff like that with all the police the lot uh drugs the role models damn yapping ass wives and girlfriends <laughs> they end up getting shot and arrested that should have been one yeah <laughs> I bet you got more videos on that shit than anything. <laughs> but again, I think if you make a commitment to uh, lifetime learning and make sure you're improving your stuff and, uh, and everything, I think that'll help be probably the most beneficial things you did. Again, it's Change the Life, hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burton. Again, I'll be gone next week, but I will be back the week after that. That's what, the 20th? 20, yeah, 20th. So look, I'll see you guys on the 20th, probably do a stream next week and everything. I, you know, I'll try to send shout out to you guys in the Bahamas. I don't think the internet going to be working too good over there and everything. Oh, Okay, I'm gonna pay for it. Nah, trust me. I'm gonna, I, I got some grass skirts, <laughs> limbo, right. all that other kind of stuff like that and everything. No, you know, no. Trust me, trust me. I love you guys, but I got other shit to see. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for all the support, you guys. Make sure you tune in. Uh, you know, like, share, subscribe. All the videos we got. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Like the Facebook page. You can keep supporting me, and I thank you so much for all the support you've been giving us. Make sure you reach out to us at Majestic Business Services. Remember, www.majesticbiz.com. The number at office is 678-479-4007. We'll take care of you guys and all your tax prep needs this uh, uh, this tax season. Again, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Change Your Lives, hosted by your truly Deontay Bird, and make sure you go to that Mr. Short Dollar YouTube page. We got a Facebook page, too. A lot of great information for you future entrepreneurs, personal finance, real estate investing, business advice, all that stuff there. Your brother got a lot of stuff he putting out to you guys for free. (laughs) So take advantage of it. Love you guys. See you soon. Take care.